Um, and then we are um, recording today's session. So you will receive uh, a follow-up email with a link to that, and it will also be available on YouTube. But with that, I'm going to turn things over to Amy Johnson. Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate it. Hello, everyone, and welcome. So glad you are here. Um, wow, a really long list to, to uh, scroll through to see all the folks that are here with us this afternoon. That's wonderful. I'm going to keep my chat panel open so that I can see if any questions come in through chat. So I'll be watching that. And then as Daryl explained, um, you certainly can raise your hand or unmute yourself and, and interrupt me uh, at any point. That is just fine. So uh, we are um, today doing a division update. This is a, uh, a webinar or a, an online session that I offer four times a year a quarter, on a quarterly basis just to give you some updates from about what's going on here in Tallahassee and more importantly with uh, the division. So if we'll go on to the next slide, please, Daryl. And I guess as I'm, as I'm saying that, I do want to say a huge thank you to Daryl um, and his for tech support today. I, I could not do this without Daryl's help. So I am so appreciative, Daryl, for your uh, support and in, in making this look easy. All I have to do is talk. Um, and that is something I can definitely do. So anyway, again, everyone, welcome. Amy Johnson, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm so glad that you're here with us uh, this afternoon for our division update. We can go on to the next slide please. And that is, uh, yes, our, our Division of Library Information Services yet yeah, once again. So we'll go on to our next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so gosh, I felt like it was really appropriate to start um, basically the very first slide with uh, letting you know that legislative session starts tomorrow. In case you weren't already aware of that, um, this particular uh, legislative session starts tomorrow and goes through March 11th. In those even years, as you can see on my slide, we do have um, earlier session uh, that January through March and then uh, odd years, odd numbered years, we have a, a later session, March through May. Each se session is scheduled for 60 days, uh, but uh, we're looking forward to having lots of folks in town with us starting tomorrow for our upcoming legislative session. Uh, so 60 days kicks off tomorrow. And um, Daryl, if you'll take us to the next slide, please. That leads me straight into uh, reminding you all that today actually is uh, the, the last day to register to attend uh, our, our Florida Library Association's 2022 Library Legislative Day. Um, so registering today is really good and important. We do have folks who are coming to Tallahassee um, next week um, in order to be present to talk about library funding and library um, uh, projects that are important. Um, so that is next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and I've given you the URL there um, at the bottom of the slide so that you can go in and see the um, the, the activities that are planned, including a, a reception here in our building on the evening of the 18th, that would be Tuesday evening. And then of course the 19th, uh, that Wednesday of next week uh, will be Library Legislative Day. So we're really looking forward to having folks here in Tallahassee and, and here in the gray building on the 18th and 19th. Um, we're lo looking forward to seeing library supporters. And so as session starts tomorrow, uh, we're gearing up for uh, visitors from all over the state. Uh, uh, well, of course, that would start tomorrow as well. But for, for our library friends, that will um, be uh, sort of pointed at next week uh, on the 18th and 19th. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is pretty traditional on these updates, is we're going to take a look at the budget process and timing, calendars, that sort of thing, um, because there's been a little bit of an update since the last time we were together. So looking at our yearly budget cycle, and I did um, update this slide, so you can see sort of at that 7 o'clock, PM, if you will, um, time on this on the circle. Uh, the governor's budget recommendation was released on December the 9th. It's required to be released 30 days before session, and it was indeed released on December 9th. So what I'm going to be showing you on some of the next slides is actually the um, budget as it is proposed in the governor's budget. And I suppose before we leave this slide, let me 
just take a step back and let's talk a little bit about the process. I probably I promise not terribly long. So you will see back on the um, 5 p.m. kind of uh, uh, placement on this circle, um, the Department of State released our budget proposal on September 16th. So the very first step is the Department of State releases a budget proposal. And then as we just were talking about, the governor releases the governor's budget on December 9th. And of course, part of what will happen during legislative session, as you can see, as we continue moving around the circle here, is that as we get into March, we will be looking forward to the Senate and the House having each having a budget um, and then the, they will work together to have a final um, uh, budget that they both have passed by the last day of session, which is scheduled in that 60 day time frame to be March 11th. And of course, that will then uh, that budget will then move to the governor for for review. Um, the governor does have the authority to do line item vetoes, uh, uh, as well as, of course, signing the budget, which is, of course, what we want him to do. And we would need him to sign the budget by July 1st, uh, the start of the state fiscal year. So that just gives us a quick overview of where we are in the uh, yearly budget cycle, um, having just received a relatively recently, well, just in the last month, received the governor's budget. So let's take a, a deeper dive in looking at what's actually in the governor's budget. So if we can, thank you, go on to this next. Um, so this is uh, uh, looking at the, um, the, the last two years that, are, of course, are actual years, and then 22, 23, you're going to see in all the upcoming slides uh, being in italics, and what that means is that's what's currently proposed. Obviously, it's not yet what is finalized. Um, and I will say that at this point, this is labeled as the uh, Department of State legislative budget request. I can tell you this is also the um, in the governor's budget as well. So we've got uh, $2 million, which is worth that recurring amount for library cooperative grants. We've got $2.68 million in our Federal Library um, Services and Technology Act grant programs. We've got $17.3 million in state aid to libraries, which is that recurring amount. Um, at this point, we are not anticipating for 22-23 any federal um, awards. However, I, I heard a little bit of rumbling about that, that there might be something, but obviously time will tell and we'll keep you in the loop on that if there are any federal funds for the 22-23 year. Um, and at this point in the year, there's there are not any uh, uh, predictions for public library construction. And we'll talk a, a bit more about that in just a few moments. So moving um, forward to the next slide, um, just to giving you a reminder that you can always look at what the department's uh, legislative budget requests are by using the Florida Fiscal Portal. Um, you can always get a quick look at um, any any year. Uh, obviously, what we're most interested in right now, or what I'm focused on right most right now, is 22, 23. But obviously, you using Florida's fiscal portal, you can go back and look at previous years. So let's look at some more uh, related to the budget. Looking at um, in and this to this next slide again, the bold 21, 22. That's the year we're in right this minute. Uh, the the column immediately to the right in italics is what we're looking at in the governor's proposal uh, for this 22-23, for this next year. Um, and obviously there are some things to note, especially when you look at those federal funds. In 2020-2021, we had CARES Act funding uh, in the federal line. And in 21-22, we had ARPA funds. So those years you can see in that middle and the federal grants trust fund for those two years are higher for the, because of those two um, federal awards. Um, so that $9 million is, is back to where we sort of anticipate that award falling. Um, and so anyway, that's looking at um, the, our overall budget. Let's go on and, and look in a little bit more detail on our five-year funding history. Again, 21-22 being the year we're in right now, sort of that highlight, uh, that bolded, sorry, next to the last line. And then looking at that 22-23 year um, and looking at projected and what is in 
currently in the govern the governor's budget at thirty six point six million dollars. So looking um, at the, onto the next slide, looking at more specifically uh, in some of our programs, um, which I think are probably are very much of interest to all of you all. Um, again, in state aid to libraries, I mentioned this on, on, on an earlier slide. What is in the governor's budget right now is the $17.3 million. That's the recurring amount. Um, I suppose let me stop here and say, which I probably will say more than once today, is that um, Part of the reason that it's so important uh, for you to lend your voice in library legislative days and or to make sure that your um, library legislative personnel in your county or your city um, are aware of the importance of uh, library funding to your library system so that they can help you and, and they, um, the, the folks in your uh, city or county, um, can help lend voices to the Florida Library Association in support for additional funding for programs. Uh, that $17.3 million is the recurring amount. That's the amount that's in the base budget. Um, so, and that is what is indeed in the governor's budget. So we'll see as we move through legislative session, if we can, um, have a little bit of some additional dollars that might make that state aid to libraries funding go up. Um, we'll look next at this next slide, which is library cooperative grant funding. This is for our partners and friends in the multi-type library cooperatives. Again, $2 million is the recurring amount. That is indeed in the governor's budget at $2 million. Um, and then we'll go on to the next slide, public library construction grants. There we go, thank you. I put question marks here because, and I'll tell you, I wanted it to look a little different because public library construction grants do not go through the same budgetary process. So these are, um, they're never in the department's budget nor in the governor's budget. These uh, particular grants, um, uh, grant applications are given to the legislature for their consideration. So you'll see there from what I, and what I have um, put on the slide, question marks for 22, 23. And Daryl, if you'll go on to the next slide, um, you'll see what we've got sort of in the offing here. Uh, for 22, 23, we have sent to the legislature uh, consideration and requests for 31 grant applications to support public library construction to the tune of $14.6 million in a funding request. So um, uh, obviously we, we hope um, and we'll work towards the best we can in, in uh, getting some funding for uh, all the requests that are currently in uh, consideration before the legislature again starting tomorrow. So as you're talking to your legislative delegation, to your folks who uh, make contact with um, folks that are making funding decisions here in Tallahassee, please make sure they're aware of the importance of these um, funding programs. Um, even if you don't have a public library construction grant um, application in consideration, um, you telling the story of the importance of this program uh, to your library in the past or potentially in the future um, goes a long way in, in supporting uh, the, the overall uh, work of this program. So let's go ahead and take a, a look at our federal funding and sort of where we um, where we're looking at for for that. I will say that for 22-23, I did put uh, not yet released the federal. As you all may very well know, there is not a federal budget uh, for the current year. They're on continuing resolution uh, for about another month, I believe. Um, so we have not yet been given an allotment uh, for the 22-23 year. Um, that doesn't cause any of us to lose any sleep quite yet. Um, this money is not something that we would start uh, allocating uh, until July 1, 2022. So we really do have an, a little bit more time uh, to uh, before we, you know, we sort of need to know, if you will, um, what the amount of funds we have for our federal allotment. Um, and we do anticipate that we will have an allotment uh, at the at that at the point that we need it we do anticipate that it would be about around about nine million dollars which you can see uh you know sort of taking out the cares act and the arpa act funding you can see that 
our uh, allotment is running us, you know, in the last couple of years, just right at about $9 million. Uh, so that's certainly what we anticipate um, in this in this year. And we would um, anticipate about $2.6 million uh, in external awards out of that $9 million. So again, um, we don't have all those details quite yet, but, um, but th those are the things that we're anticipating. And I suppose, um, and, and as I said before, we don't anticipate any additional federal funds at this point, but obviously should that change? Uh, and, and should we have the good fortune of something like a, in some more CARES or more ARPA, we will certainly make sure that you all are very aware of that. So we've, we're about to sort of leave kind of the, uh, the budget part of this. And so I'm happy to uh, take any questions if there are any questions related to budget at this point. I don't see any in the chat, but I don't, I'll take a breath and um, listen to see if there are any questions. All right, well, we'll keep going. Uh, certainly not the last opportunity for questions uh, related to budget, maybe just the first opportunity. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of leave, uh, oh, uh, thank you, Julie. So any word on infrastructure funds? Um, so no, the, the short answer, Julie, is no, I don't have any word on infrastructure funds. Um, and just to, to um, circle back with uh, the, the, all, the group assembled, um, there, are some federal funds through U.S. Treasury that can be made available for public library construction. Um, and um, I am still waiting on words to find out about the, the status of Florida's application for those funds. And to be very clear, those funds from U.S. Treasury can be used for broadband, they can be used for new health facilities, you know, so in, as many federal programs are, it's a very big and broad program, um, but public library construction is one of the, uh, uh, one of the programs that can uh, be uh, uh, included. And so I am waiting for word on that. And as soon as I hear anything, I will certainly <coughs> let everyone know. Absolutely. Um, and so, and then Gladys asked 22, 23 um, uh, maintenance of effort issues. No. So actually, no. Um, so there are, th that's a great question, Gladys. So let me um, kind of be more precise and maybe um, hang tight with me just a second. Uh, let's see if I can. Yes. Uh, yes. So, well, let me just talk it through. I was trying to get to back to a slide, but I don't think I have it on a slide very well. So great question, Gladys. The, um, we, um, for the year that just ended, which is the year 2020, 2021, we fell below the required federal maintenance of effort. Um, and so that has been as of December 30th and actually a couple of days before we submitted uh, um, our, our annual report to the federal government, which is where we uh, documented for them that we were about $2.3 million below what was required. Um, and so at this point, the process um, is that we have until June 30th to of 2022 to decide if we're going to apply for a waiver. Um, and if that waiver is deemed or granted, uh, I should say, by under federal review, we would know that by October 1, 2022. And um, if that waiver were granted, uh, we would not see a dip um, in our a federal appropriation for 2324. So the actual uh, impact of not making our maintenance of effort required level in 2021 is actually felt in 23-24 because it just takes a while for us to communicate with the federal government 
to give them all the data for us to apply for a waiver if that is what uh, this Department of State decides to do. Um, and at this point, I am investigating with uh, department employees about what that will mean and what it will look like to put forward that waiver request. So obviously, as we move through the next couple of months, I can certainly answer more questions. But for right now, what I can tell you is we documented to the, to the Institute of Museum and Library Services that we did not meet maintenance of effort. Um, they are aware of that. That's been, that is now on file and the ball is now in our court related to the waiver. It looks to me in round terms, like uh, if we are do not apply for the waiver or if the waiver is not granted, and I do have some data from the federal, uh, for, as released by the federal government, um, they don't grant many waivers. Let me just, at least, you know, based on raw numbers, um, it looks to me like it'll be about a million dollar reduction in our federal award. And again, that would be for 23-24. Um, so that would be an impact for us beginning on July 1, 2023. So stay tuned on that. Stay tuned on that. But um, for right now, we're, we're moving ahead and looking forward to 22-23. All right, so great uh, budget questions. And again, we can circle back here as needed, um, but let's talk about some other things. How about, let's go to the next slide and let's, let's look at a couple of other things that are going on uh, for, for us here in the Division of Library Information Services. So we do have a couple of councils and boards. Um, our citizen support organization, which is the State Library and Archives of Florida, I'm sorry, Friends of the State Library and Archives of all right, everybody, I'm sorry. I had tea for lunch, so I'm gonna just take a breath here and slow down. Um, so our citizen support organization is the Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida, Inc. Um, and they will meet next in late February in Winter Park. They do meet once a quarter and those meetings are open and available um, as public meetings. So more than happy to have you come. Uh, we do have our State, Lib State Library Council. <laughs> um, I, definitely need to try to uh, slow down here. State Library Council, and they will next meet in the May timeframe. So we do have upcoming meetings for both of our councils and boards. And I do, um, I do see um, a question, another question. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the budget for just a second. So we did not meet the maintenance of effort in FY21. That is a correct. Um, it every so this is this is very complex so we did not meet maintenance of effort in 2020 2021 so we may incur a proportional reduction in 2324 um if the if we do not apply for a waiver or if the waiver is not granted I cannot yet predict and I have no reason to let me say it better I have no reason to predict that we will not meet maintenance of effort given the governor's budget as it is currently released for 2022-2023. We will be fine for maintenance of effort as long as we don't take any, um, any line item vetoes or, or any reductions. We should be just fine. We are skating at, if you will, sort of right at the place where we have to be for funding but as long as the 22-23 funding goes through as proposed or higher, right? I mean, but, but if, if it goes through as proposed, we will be fine and we will not take, we are not in jeopardy of not meeting maintenance of effort for 22-23. The thing that makes this so complex, folks, and it really is, is the maintenance of effort required level is a rolling three-year average based on our actual expenditures. So the next piece of information I have to know is really in order to be able to do any kind of predicting is whether uh, is whether we're going to be granted the waiver or not, because um, that will have to do with what whether we take a reduction in 2324, regardless the, the maintenance of effort amount becomes the three-year average of what we actually spent. So because we um, had a $2.3 million reduction, if you will, in our overall general revenue spending, that will 
drive our average slightly lower as we move into the three-year average. So, so I'm just going to want to make sure that with this the, this question that I'm that I'm. So we didn't meet maintenance of effort in 2020, 2021. That is true and documented. I have. I see that we will meet maintenance of effort in FY22 and in FY23 as best I can tell. I mean, I don't really, you know, I, so in the year that we're in right now, which is 21-22, we look to be just fine um, for, we are just fine for maintenance of effort. And per the governor submitted budget, we are just fine for the year that is 22-23. So there's, uh, would, uh, at this time, it would only be a potential reduction, federal reduction in the one year, which is 23-24, based on what we reported for 2020-2021. Again, it's very, um, it's quite complex. So do I hear a question? Okay, not yet. All right. All right, so we're going to, we're going to keep going, but these are great questions. So, and obviously we can, uh, we can take it offline also if we need to, um, to be able to, uh, is, if, if we need to in the, in, in, as, as we move forward. But yes, absolutely. 20, FY 2023, we, we should be right. We should be really good as long as we uh, keep things where they are right now, which is good. And again, just, uh, you know, as, because the maintenance of effort is the entire general revenue budget for the division, it's going to fluctuate, right? You know, so if we, get additional uh, dollars or, you know, or get some money restored into state aid, um, you know, into the recurring amount, that is going to bu bubble up and increase that general revenue spending, which means that our maintenance of effort will go up on that three-year average, right? So, and, it, and then, you know, likewise, if it were to go down, so this is just something that um, because the maintenance of effort required level is a three-year average, it's, it just kind of is a continually moving uh, amount. There we go. All right, so let's talk about our on our next slide here. Um, since we're still talking about funding, but it, it's just good. Um, so just in case you all haven't heard me say this, and I know many of you have already heard me say this, we are um, in the middle of our um, evaluation for our current um, five-year plan for our federal funds which the title of that is Florida's Libraries Transform Community. So that is, that is our currently, that is our current long range plan that is on file with the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Um, and that is what uh, helps to uh, provide uh, oversight and sort of direction for our federal funding. Um, so what the first step we have to do is a five year evaluation and we are working on that. Um, and then we also need to be uh, preparing our next five-year plan, um, sort of looking at how we will spend funds into the, the future, into the, the, the following five years. Okay. Um, and so one of the things I want to make sure that I have um, had an opportunity to to tell and share with all of you all is that we need your help as we're shaping the next five-year plan. Uh, there are going to be opportunities in the next, I'm going to say months to six weeks for you to provide feedback, um, both through uh, virtual meetings as well as through a survey in order to um, let us know how things are going or how they should go. Um, so in the, in essence, and you, many of you have heard me say this uh, in the last uh, in the last month or so. Uh, basically, I'll be doing all but begging you all to uh, provide information and to provide feedback to us, uh, so that we can um, pull uh, the, our plan together and and submit it to the federal government um, for their approval um, for for uh, the way we will guide the the use of federal funds um, into the future. So just know uh, that we need your help and those uh, specific requests are, are coming sometime soon. So stay on the lookout. And I, I will hazard to say that we will um, uh, take every opportunity to uh, send out the information related to those um, online uh, opportunities uh, 
for like a virtual meeting, a virtual focus group, if you will, um, and the survey. So we, we will uh, make sure that you're well aware of that. So if we go on to our next slide, we'll sort of talk about um, some, some other things going on. Um, we are so excited. We um, launched a, a holiday book drive. Um, and the, really the thing that's important for you to know about that um, is it's a fabulous partnership uh, between the Florida Department of State the Florida Department of Corrections and the Florida Department of Children and Families. Um, we are uh, working with our uh, patron base, just as you would work with your patron base um, in, in your locale, uh, to uh, accept gently used materials in order to provide to the uh, correctional facility libraries and state hospital libraries. And, and up to this point, um, we've got over 1,200 items that have been donated to us. Um, and, and we still, as you can see there from our um, timeline, we still have a couple of months to go. So really excited about this partnership and excited to be able to support uh, these uh, state uh, uh, facilities um, and providing reading materials for, for, for folks who are in those um, are in those facilities. So anyway, great, great stuff, great partnerships, and just wanted to share that with you. If we move on to the next slide and talk about, I think about another partnership we have, the Florida Book Award. So submissions are ongoing, and um, our entries for the 20, anything published in 2021 are due this week, due on January 13th. I'm pretty sure that's Thursday. Um, so if you happen to know an author that has uh, published a book in the last uh, in, in, in calendar year 2021, uh, please remind them that they can uh, submit that uh, for review by the Florida Book Awards. Um, and the winners will be uh, announced in the first week of March. So um, the jurors for the Florida Book Awards certainly have their work cut out for them um, in reading and evaluating submissions. Um, I always like to, to make sure that you all are aware that Florida has one of the oldest and one of the most robust uh, state book awards um, from any other state. And it's something really to be proud of, our Florida Book Awards uh, program um, administered by the uh, 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 Florida State University um, through their libraries. It's really a stellar program and DLIS is very proud to be a partner uh, in the Florida Book Awards. So it's good stuff all around. Can't wait to find out who the winners are as we move through the 2021 competition. Moving on and thinking about some other um, some other things that are going on, Career Online High School, we do have 39 libraries participating right now. Great stuff with Career Online High School. This is a program that has been funded um, uh, by the state. Um, this is the fourth year, um, unfortunately not consecutively, but this is the fourth year of state funding and certainly many public libraries have been carrying on this program through uh, local funding or or, uh, or um, foundation, you know, or, or grant funding. Um, so a great program. If you're not aware about Career Online High School and you would like to be made aware of Career Online High School, I would be more than happy to talk to you or have other folks who can talk to you as well. It's a great program um, allowing adult uh, learners 19 and older to get um, a, uh, an accredited private high school diploma through the public library. Really fantastic program. And many of you are participating in that already. It's fabulous. So if we go on and think about um, on our next slide, upcoming grant deadlines, because it's the beginning of the year and because it's not quite busy enough, we, you know, just uh, historically um, always have grant deadlines that are the beginning of, the, of our calendar year. So we have um, upcoming deadlines for the, our federal funds, our Library Services and Technology Act grant program, as well as our um, the, the Multi-Type Library Cooperative Grant Program, which is the Library Cooperative Grant Program and Public Library Construction. Those will all, those, uh, those, uh, those, sorry, a, a total uh, blame blank there. Um, those grant programs, there we go. Um, those applications will be due uh, coming up uh, in the sort of it, within the first quarter of this calendar year. So stay tuned for exact dates and announcements. Um, we will uh, wallpaper the world with those, um, with information um, 
both when we open the window, because we always give um, 60 days for, um, for applications to be submitted. So there will be quite a bit of, of, of awareness when we make those applications, when we open up the cycle as well. And that will also announce when they're due, uh, that 60 days later for all three of those grant programs. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Thinking about some other programs that are going on here um, in the in the division, I uh, always want to remind you about the statewide resource sharing um, and Flynn share it. So we've had a major change and I know we've had an opportunity to be together a couple of times in a division update um, with a change to our career service, which happened in um, October. Um, moving from a former vendor to a new vendor. So um, we hope that things are, are going well with that. We, we believe things are going well with that. Um, and we uh, hope and invite you to become and to participate with uh, Flynn Share It, which is the state's uh, resource sharing platform. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, I certainly can get you in touch with someone or, or if you're interested in either of these, the statewide career or Flynn Share It, if you're not aware of either of those things, happy to get you more information about that. Moving on to our next, um, thank you, Yvonne, uh, about that Flynn comment. That's great. We're glad. Um, the statewide digital platform, this is something where um, since the last time we've been together, since our last division update, there is a great announcement here uh, with this particular program. We have been working, the division's been working for a number of years. Um, in order to um, make available a statewide digital platform so that um, LAMS, which are libraries, archives, or museums who have uh, digital content or who have items that, that maybe uh, you believe should become digital content would have a platform or a place for those digital um, uh, uh, items to live and the description of those items. And so we are really pleased to announce that we have been through uh, quite a long uh, procurement process um, and we have selected a vendor um, in Discovery Garden. We are working to finish up a contract. Yes, woo, and yay is right. I mean, if you all um, have been hearing cheers and, um, and, and whoops of joy, um, it has definitely been from Tallahassee. Uh, yes, uh, we're so excited and we're glad that you're excited with us. Um, so we are right now in the process of getting this contract underway. We then need some time to uh, build the system with the vendor. Um, and then we will be um, making announcements about how uh, libraries, archives and museums of, of any uh, sort of size and type who um, obviously meet some criteria as you know as you would expect um, would be able to participate so stay tuned on this because we have lots more information to come um, and lots more information to share with you about our statewide digital platform we are so excited about this opportunity and uh, it's been uh, underway for quite some time and now we can all celebrate together about um, about it, it, it our excitement and and how this is going to uh, come to fruition and, and help uh, folks all across the state. Um, we're so excited. So moving forward and thinking about some other really exciting stuff uh, that's happened, although the slide's not terribly exciting and I, I'm the one that put the slide together. So that's my own fault for that. But um, we did um, hire the University of Florida and, our, and their Bureau of Economic and Business Research to complete two studies for us. And both studies are now available on our webpage. Um, one is an, uh, an economic impact study of public libraries, and the other is a, um, a longitudinal major event study. Um, and those studies and, and some summary information about those studies are available on our webpage. Um, and we're, we're excited uh, to work with all of you all in the Florida Library Association to determine how best to use these findings um, and to, to, and truthfully, one of the things we're considering and thinking about is, is um, and, and already discussing is what are the next steps in this um, 
in the studies uh, that we have have just completed what might be logical next steps with the University of Florida and Bieber in looking at the uh, the importance of libraries in Florida. So stay tuned on that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Kim, for pushing out that link. That is really helpful. Thank you so very much. And let's go on and look at this next um, slide. Um, this was just announced today. So this is truly hot off the press. Um, the, we have in the Florida Memory Program um, have uh, just released um, the uh, state and county officer directories um, for between 1868 and 1969. So in case you weren't aware, um, Florida's Secretary of State since 1845 has maintained a directory of every county and state official who was either elected to office or appointed by the governor. And so we have worked uh, to make these records um, available and searchable um, uh, on our Florida Memory webpage. And so uh, you can go to this particular um, uh, set of materials and you can search by um, a county name um, and see who the officers, uh, the, the officers are for any given time frame and in any given place. And we're really excited. This is a huge data set. Um, we will be making, um, so we, we've done through 1969, we will be continuing to make um, more recent, if you will, uh, uh, to, to me, uh, 1970 and it seems more recent, certainly, uh, than, than, than 1868, for sure. But um, so we'll continue to make records available um, in this particular record series, but we're really excited to release this particular uh, data set um, as of today. So please, I hope you'll go out and take a look at that. So let me remind you of some other um, uh, things that we offer for, for you all. And I'm taking a quick look at the time. Uh, our table of content service. So if you are interested in receiving um, table of contents uh, from any uh, professional journals, as you see here, uh, uh, some of the titles that we have available, you just um, give us your email and then we will send you the table of contents. You can tell us which articles are interesting and we'll get those articles to you. So a table of content service that we offer for, for you all. Hope you're aware of that and you're using it. Likewise, I hope that you're using our professional resources. Um, we do license electronic resources specifically for, um, for uh, library staff. Um, and so I hope that you're aware of that and that you are um, uh, using our electronic resources that we license uh, for you all. Any staff member of a public library, public school, or public academic library can get a state library card and you can access the library literature database and our collection of professional ebooks. And if we look at the next slide, what you'll see is um, some just some cover art, which is uh, always a, a nice visual uh, for some of our professional ebooks. So we hope that you're aware of this and that you will are, are using. Um, our services and the things that we license in support of you and the work that you're doing every day um, in your uh, at your locale. So sort of as we're kind of bringing this a little bit to a close, let's talk a little bit about continuing education. I always want to remind you about the incredible opportunities that you have um, in um, being able to, to tap into some training. Um, which is great. So we have an incredible variety of places that we can tap into training. Uh, I do want to highlight a couple of things today. So if we'll go to the next slide, please, Daryl. Um, I want to make sure that folks are aware that um, folks in the archives are, are doing a, um, a, a an on-demand training. I'm sorry, um, that was reminding me that I have a meeting at three o'clock. I apologize. Um, so we're managing archives and historical records is a training that we will do on site um, at at, at your request. Um, so we we actually have a um, session in later March set up in Lake County where we're going to go down and uh, do a site visit and then have a full day of training. Uh, for uh, for staff on managing archives and historical records. So if that's of interest to you, 
um, you, there's an email address there on your slide, or certainly you can always uh, uh, contact me um, and I can put you in contact with uh, the folks there who uh, talk like an archivist because uh, th that is uh, something that they absolutely do. So we hope that, that you're aware that we provide this kind of support and training and that if it's of interest uh, to you that you are, are sort of letting us know so that we can help you out. So some additional training opportunities that are coming up. Um, so the nice list here, we've got uh, lots of brainstorming sessions that are um, upcoming related to the to the uh, Florida Library Youth Program. So you see those listed there. We also have an E-rate uh, funding year 2022 um, uh, discussion on Thursday or, or presentation on Thursday. Um, and we do have our DLIS discussion later this month uh, is uh, our quarterly COHA user group. So um, there, there are links to all of these trainings on our continuing education page, the division's continuing on education page. Um, again, uh, do, please do not work too hard for to find that. Uh, thank you, Amy Tipler has just put that. Uh, thank you, Amy T, uh, in the um, in the chat. But you know, just shoot one of us an email, and we'll be glad to you know to hook you up with any of this information because I know we're sort of flying through it in a little bit at a at a, a, a fast speed here. So let's talk um, about rule revisions because, as always, we've got rule revisions ongoing. Uh, we are in the middle or sort of actually should say towards the end of the revisions related to our library grant programs um, and we are um, we are at, towards the end of the electronic rec record keeping actually i think that one has finished and i just failed to get it off the my slide so that would be uh, my fault the one that i really want to pull uh, bring to your attention is the one there that's in the middle 1b-24.003 we're getting ready to start working on updating the general schedule 15, which is for public libraries. And let me just say that while it's called public libraries, it is used by uh, academic libraries as well. This is the uh, uh, general record schedule um, with, with uh, record types that are specific to libraries. And so we're getting ready to start working on that. And again, this is a place where we need your help. Um, we need your feedback on what might need to change in the GS15 as we're going through this process. So stay tuned. Again, there's gonna be more opportunity for you to provide feedback, you know, sort of what's working in the general schedule right now, the general schedule 15, and what is, um, what could be strengthened. So please, um, we, we welcome, truly we welcome um, uh, uh, any, you know, feedback for that. Um, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, Gladys is um, shouting out to Beth uh, for the, her pre presentation, which is was really <laughs> very entertaining. Yes, yes, I'm so glad. Um, and and while Beth did it, she did do a great job. She would be happy to repeat that, um, maybe at a little slower pace. I think at the directors' meeting we were um, we were going very quickly. Um, her slides are available on our webpage, and certainly, again, she and, and other archive staff would be more than happy to uh, talk about uh, general record schedules or uh, you know archives, historical records, any of those things. So please please reach out to us. I think sometimes uh, that's a place where um, it might be a little bit of a secret that we have uh, these folks on staff who are experts in uh, archives and, and records management and uh, historical records. So anyway, please please reach out if that's of, uh, of use and of interest, and I'm glad it was enjoyable uh, for the that early December presentation we did. All right, so sort of really as we're wrapping up here, because we've got about 11 minutes, um, I hope that you're taking advantage of, of our social media platforms and the, uh, the ways that we're doing our best to stay in touch with you. Um, so I, I, you know, I hope that you're, that you are aware of, of, of these particular uh, uh, platforms. And at the next slide, you'll see that I already am thinking about our next update, which will be April 12th. And of course, that is scheduled to be about a month after um, legislative session ends. So um, hopefully at that point, we will have some additional news about uh, where the budget sort of uh, finished up in legislative session. Uh, my guess is, if I had to guess, that we might not have an approved budget by April 12th, 
but we would at least know where the legislature, what, what the legislature approved in their budget and what would be uh, going before uh, the, the governor um, at, at that point when we get together sort of in mid-April. So with that, we'll move on to my uh, beautiful and attractive question mark on the next slide. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, we got about 10 minutes. And so um, I do want to know, you know, what questions do you have or what, um, other things should we uh, should I be updating you on, or um, what things do you want to update your colleagues? Again, um, please unmute yourself or you know type in chat, uh, whichever is your preference. All right, sorry about that. I was taking a drink of water. I didn't figure anybody wanted to hear that. Um, is there any questions? Um, okay, question, is COHS in the governor's budget? No, COHS is not currently in the governor's budget. It has been submitted um, to the legislature for consideration. So it has been um, submitted um, right this second. I can't tell you exactly. Um, on which side, the House or the Senate? And um, just one second, I can tell you. Um, the House has introduced a bill um, uh, for Career Online High School, but there is nothing in the governor's uh, budget at this time. That's not atypical. I, I should say that is, it actually is typical that it's not in the governor's budget. And and Craig, yes, exactly, in the House. Uh, House Bill 2729, if anybody wants to uh, to look it up. So we'll see how that um, progresses through the through legislative session. Any other questions? And I suppose if not, I mean, I'm not pushing anybody away. I've got nothing else to do until three o'clock except for or and except for talk to you all um so i will stay on but at that at this point um daryl if you would go to the next screen just so that we can make sure that we've got my um, email address and phone number there um so you know please contact me or any dlis staff member if you've got any questions um at any point, you do not have to wait for a division update to to ask questions um if you're not sure who to contact well, shoot me an email and I'll get your email to the to the right person. So just please reach out. Don't hesitate to reach out. At this point, I have finished um, the, the presentation for today. I will stay on and, and gladly answer any other questions. But for anybody else that would like a short seven minute break before their three o'clock, um, I am happy to give you that um, at that time to take that quick uh, to take that quick break. And, and thank you, Gladys, for the kind words. And uh, thank you, Tom, for putting the, the, the link to the bill there in the uh, chat. So if you're interested in seeing that Career Online High School submission, um, you can click on that link. Uh, and again, the, uh, the, the chat and the links should go out in the um, recording so you'll have access to this uh, once we send you the the follow-up message so you should have all of that as well so good stuff thank you all for being here today again i'm going to hang around if there are any questions or or comments um i'll take another drink of water so if anybody wants to unmute themselves and um ask a question i'm happy to hear your voice thank you pat Thanks, Mary Ann. Glad you're here. Thank you, Yvonne. Glad you're here. I miss seeing everybody. Thank you, Tammy. Thanks, Elise. Yes, yes, Holly, I'll keep you in the loop on the federal construction. Um, and, and of course, we'll we'll also keep you in the loop on, on how the the uh, applications that are before the legislature how they do as well uh, so thank you holly i know there's there's great interest great ellen thanks thanks charlotte charles great to see you or great to see your chat and your name how about that and thanks vicky yeah uh, always glad to talk about the budget 
um, and, and hope I, I hope I get to see some of you next week. That would be great here in Tallahassee. It'd be wonderful. Thank you, Lisa.